Hey, this is JC and welcome to Small Brick City. I've been away for about a week from my Lego studio as I was traveling for work and I'll be here for at least another 10 days before I fly off again. Now anytime I know I'm going to be away for a period of time, if I know in advance, I'll always film and produce a couple of videos so that I can release them each day even though I'm not around. And that's how I managed to get out content almost every day when I was traveling. I was in Mumbai, India for a project. If you wanted to check out what I did, check out the previous video as I showed you exactly what I did. On my way back, I dropped by Singapore and I went to a Lego shop. Now, I've got to tell you this, if you ever go to Singapore, you do want to check out the Lego shops because there are probably more Lego shops per capita than any place in the world. Let me give you an example. The main shopping belt, which is Orchard Road, it's one long road that also leads on to Brass Basa Road and gets to Suntec City. So it's one long big shopping belt. In that five kilometer stretch, which is three miles, there are four certified Lego shops, each with a pick a brick wall. There are also three full-size Toys R Us, and then there are other small toy shops. In fact, in Far East Shopping Center, you can get a collection of toy shops which specializes in limited edition toys as well as retired sets. So it's a great place to look for retired Lego sets. So my point is, in a three mile or five kilometer stretch, you have many Lego shops. You know, I hear horror stories uh, with people from other countries they have to travel for two days without food and water to find a single Lego shop nearest to their home or their city. Well, here you can literally go to four Lego shops in an hour. You know, it's one train stop each way or you can just simply walk and you'll be able to hit four Lego shops. So I tell you this to get you insanely jealous, but also to tell you how I spent uh, my day yesterday or just part of my day yesterday. Uh, from my studio, I went to a Lego shop to get a couple of things. And of course I saw the pick a brick wall. Many people ask me how I get spare parts and the pick a brick wall is one way. I don't always buy parts when I go to a pick a brick wall, but in this case, there were parts that I thought would be useful to me. I don't have any specific need for any specific part, but I liked what I saw. And as you can see, the many different colors and I don't have that many colorful bricks. And I thought, well, for upcoming mocks, I do want a more cheerful mood. So these colored bricks will work very well. I also wanted to buy some other sets, uh, which I managed to get. But then I noticed there was a discount pile. So I asked the girl if there were even more discount items because I said, Brick Bakery always says, do not buy Lego at full price. So the girl gave me a strange look and said, what the heck is a Brick Bakery? I said, it's a YouTube Lego channel. She said, like Jang Bricks. And I said, exactly, just not as good. So she directed me to the discounted area, but there wasn't the set I wanted. And I knew that they had the set because online, uh, they have it on the online shop, but it, they did say I was out of stock. I tried my luck. So I asked her to call the other Lego shops because uh, they're a chain to see if there's this particular set, which is 40% off. She gave a few calls and sure enough, there was one store just 10 minutes away which had that set. So I drove 10 minutes and I went to the second Lego store to collect this set. Of course, when I went there, there's another pick a brick wall. And this time it's a completely different set of bricks. And there were even, I think, I won't call it better bricks, but there were bricks which I thought uh, were more rare in the sense that I don't see them all the time in a pick a brick wall. And uh, there were good colors as well. So I got another tub. So all together two tubs in this uh, single trip or this day trip. So different items as you can see, not as colorful. In fact, there are more small items. But in this video, I'm going to show you what I got, why I got them, and also how I stuffed my tubs for the pick a brick. So let's get started. So here we have the first pick a brick tub that I filled up. As you can see, I think I've managed to maximize a lot of space. I probably spent about 20 minutes, maybe tops, 15, 20 minutes to fill this up. There's still some gaps, but you know, I think I got quite a bit in. And you can see a lot of these I pre-stack and I'll show you how I fill this up. So the way I go about filling this up. First, let's open this up. Got a little container here just to capture all the parts. I probably got about 
can be a dozen or 15 different types of bricks. But here gives you a good idea of how I do the stacking and packing of the bigger bricks. In the case of these 2x4 bricks, or any big bricks, I would stack them like that and they would fit inside. And I'll do this for all the different bricks. And even plates, I would stack the plates like that. And you can see this 2x2 two two plate. And for the longer 1x6 bricks, I would stack them in such an arrangement as well. So these are my main contents, I would say, or the, the big bricks, the ones that would take up the most space. So usually I would fill this at least about half to three quarters of the way with these big bricks. And then I would fill up the space with smaller tiles. Okay, notice I've got some black plates here. So I would put this in as well. Then I will pick small plates or tiles or studs. In this case, I got a lot of these small uh, one by one orange studs. Got a whole bunch of them. As you might be able to see. And I'll just drizzle them inside, shake it up, drizzle inside, shake it up. So you can see that fill up all these empty gaps. And that's basically what I would do to fill up the space. So just keep going. And then if I get other bricks, other plates, so the small flat ones, especially towel pieces, whether they're one by two or two by two, I would just drop them into gaps as well. And here we have an odd shape modified plate, and I put that in, an, and basically that's how I stuff. So my technique is basically to take the big standard bricks, whether it's one by two, two by four, two by threes, I would stack them up and I'll put them inside. And then when I'm about three quarters way in, I'll start filling up with the small loose tiles. And then I'll continue putting in these stacks. And then I'll drizzle in the smallest items. And I'll of course try to make use of the space here. Now the thing with tubs, as you all know, anyone who has bought from a pick a brick wall, there is kind of a cheat, there's an indent here. But technically that volume space is kind of made up by the inside of this lid. So sometimes, uh, and I'll show you for the other uh, mug or the cup that I got. You can actually take uh, one by four plates of bricks and stack them together and fit them inside and they fit quite well. So basically that's my technique of stacking or packing the bricks, uh, packing the mug to get the most out of it. Now let me show you what I got and why I got these items. As you can see, this particular tub is full of colorful items. I got these one by six bricks because uh, I know I would be using them in the mocks. These yellow tile tiles are always useful, especially for flooring. So you can expect one of my upcoming mocks to have a predominantly yellow floor. And then there were assortment of these one by two bricks in different colors. That's orange here. You can see I managed to get this blue, a green, more blue and more orange and also got these medium yellow orangey bricks combination of yellow bricks i've got the two by four and two by two ones here as well as just some two by two white bricks and i've no specific purpose for this but i call these utility bricks i'll always need white at some point in time again i don't have much plates so it's a great opportunity to get these plates in yellow and red, but quite a few yellow because I'm going to line for a mock. Uh, so you can expect a mock to have quite a bit of yellow in time to come. And then I got some pink 1x4s as well. No specific reason, I thought I'll just take a few, I'll never know if I need them. So for most of my pick a brick wall uh, hauls, I don't have a specific reason or need for specific bricks. I see what I think I could use in future, or maybe I need utility bricks or plates. So to me, this is a utility plate. So these are large 4x8 plates. Well, I won't call them large, but large in the context of this tub. And I have no idea when I'll use them, but I'll definitely use them in some time. And a 2x2 two two black plate, also utility. You definitely use them in your builds. And then I got some of these more unique plates. 
this one over here that's the modified plate I showed earlier so this would be great for some kind of roof or wall decoration just because of the shape so I can see this as kind of a protrusion or lip for a roof or I could put it against a modified brick with studs on the front and line them up to be some kind of decoration I have no idea, I have to play around a bit, but I think I bought enough uh, to cover at least a 16 stud wide building. So that's the bricks in this tub. Let me show you the second tub. Here we have the second tub, it's not so colourful, actually it did break open during transportation so I don't exactly have the same order I packed it in, uh, I, so I kind of repacked it. If you see, there is a block, these are 1x4 plates, not bricks but plates stacked together and originally I placed them into this top and that's what I mean by filling the space, so that really helps maximise space. Not as much colour in this one but I've got some interesting plates and parts. Let me just kind of pour out some of the smaller pieces first. Okay, so let's have a look at what I got over here. I got probably 300 of these ice cream cone parts. Now you'll probably be wondering why I need these ice cream cone parts. Well, for one, I was lucky enough to be sent a couple of ice cream parts, or the top parts, by a subscriber, and I'll show you that in a future video. But I didn't have the cones or cups, so I thought, well, great, I now have cones, lots of cones, and lots of ice cream. Now, I wasn't sent 300 ice cream tops, but if you watch the video which I showed three tricks to look like a master builder, I said one of the tips was to use parts in creative ways. Basically use the parts as they were not intended. And I think there's some potential for these ice cream cone parts to be used, whether as a decoration, whether it's part of a mock, I'm not sure. But I would probably not brick link so many of these parts, but since they're in a you know, pick a brick wall, and they don't take up much space in the sense I could really kind of just fill up the empty gaps with it, uh, it worked very well. So I got really a whole bunch of these. I also got some small plates. In this case, I had, in this particular tub, I've got lots of these small pieces. I've got a modified bracket or bracket piece. Always very useful. Got a smaller one in blue as well. Utility plate. Never know when you need this. And just nice, they had these 2x2 two two, uh, jumper plates in yellow, which matched the yellow tiles I got in the previous tub. So I thought this would be perfect again, uh, you know, for minifix to stand on or even as possible decorative elements. Uh, so I haven't thought about it yet, but I just thought it would be useful, so I got a whole bunch as well. I got these one by 2 slope pieces. This is great for rock work. If you saw my recent mountain hideout mock, uh, I used quite a few of these for the base of the rock or the foundation of that little house. So it's always very useful if you want to do rock work. More utility parts of these 1x2 brown bricks. To fill in space, I also put in uh, the jumper plates. I got them in black and white. Pure utility. 1x4 white plates, pure utility. 1x2 uh, slope tiles. I have quite a few of these, but no harm getting just a few more. I got two of these larger plates. These, well, I've not sure, I'm not sure where these come from exactly, but definitely some kind of spaceship or plane part. You can let me know in the comments if you know where this exact piece comes from. Again, this is a part that I don't think I have in my spare parts bin, so I always buy them in I always buy in pairs. So anytime I buy parts, I always buy in pairs, whether it's two, four, six, eight, and whatever. And that's just because you never know when you need them and generally you use them in pairs anyway. More of these utility plates. I got them in brown as well. These are 4x4. Four four. Uh, these will work for market stalls especially. 
one by four uh, plates. And notice again, I use the same technique of stacking by getting all the plate parts and brick parts that I needed, and I stack them into kind of columns, and I fill up at least half the space first before I put in smaller items. More colorful parts, this is a long one by six brick, one by two brown, one by four brown, Utility again, these are 2x6 brown plates. This was pretty special. A whole bunch of these 4 stud wide round bricks. No specific idea how I'll use this just yet, but I think uh, this will be useful. Maybe it could be the pedestal or base for something, a statue, or maybe even pillars for a mock. Not very sure, but I thought it would be useful to grab a bunch. Utility plate, that's a 4x6 white. Modified bricks, it's a 1x1 one one light grey with a stud on the side. Pure utility as well. This is one of those interesting plates. It's a 1x2 modified plate with 3 claw pieces or 3 teeth. And this, I can see it being used in several ways. Well, the one application I've seen it used, uh, of course, is for a piano. So these are the pedals for the piano. It's built into the base of the piano mock. Uh, but I also can see this as maybe decoration for a roof, the top of a, the edge of the roof. Or you could put it on modified bricks like that. So you've got many pieces and that could be kind of a decorative feature as well. So I bought a whole bunch of them because I think I could potentially use them. And I know that I've only one currently in my spare parts bin. I bought two of these long 1x6 curved slope bricks. No idea how I use them, but again, you see, I bought a pair. Let's see anything else. I think you've seen practically everything that the 1x2 orange plates. Just got a few. And that's basically all the parts. Oh, I did get this as well. Uh, again, I got a few just to fill up space. Let's pour this out first. That's a 1x2 modified plate with a closed bar end. Again, great for connections. Uh, if you saw my previous video, that means the one just before this one, you had seen a video on how to create Lego connections with clips and bar elements. And I highlighted this particular component. So it's a great utility component as well. Well, the rest you see inside here are the jumper plates in yellow, the 1x2 black jumper plates, 1x2 white jumper plates, uh, and also got this. That's a hinging plate in red. So again, I don't have it in this color, and since I wanted more colorful mocks, I think this will come in handy as well. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this insight on why, how, and what I fill in my pick-a-brick cup. If you have alternative ways of filling the cup to maximize the space and to get as many pieces as possible, please let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.